Yes. Yes. Okay. I see it. I'll just put it in a moment there. Good to see it. pretty much everything off and all that. So. I'm trying to think, did you have a yes, key uh, last time? Okay. That, yeah, I have like a little single blade razor, so I just kind of, you know, like go past the stubble, you just kind of. Just do the best you can, huh? You just got to go with that. Yeah. How are you doing? I'm okay. How about you guys? Good. 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 I did, I did not expect it. So you remember, um, I talked to you, Tammy talked to you, Dave talked to you. We're all from Colorado. Um, and so the last time we talked to you, it's a different situation, right? Um, our investigation was open and your case was open. Um, that's completely different now. So your case is completely closed. Um, nothing about what we're going to talk about today is, has anything to do with an open investigation. Um, but why we are here, so... Um, so the three of us work from three different agencies, right? Quite a bit different. Um, CBI, FBI, and Frederick PD, different goals. And, and we've all separately kind of said, um, did Chris seem unique to you? And me and Tammy have talked about this, Dave and I have talked about this. Did Chris's situation seem different to you? And we keep having that conversation, we can't quite put our finger on it, right? Um, we think that your life leading up to all of the things that happened uh, were very interesting to us, and for me personally, I don't know if you remember, but one of the last things you told me was, hey, Graham, I'm sorry that I started lying to you, um, and that stuck with me for the last couple months. It's been ringing in my head, right? Um, I've never, ever worked a case like this where someone told me that, ever, and we all kind of, in our own different way and in our own different wording, said it all happened a bit too quick for us, right? And then the next thing you know, for me and Tammy and for Dave, all of a sudden some patrol officers came in and arrested you. Um, and that was far quicker than we had hoped it would happen. That's why we're here today. Um, we wanted to kind of talk to you a little bit more about everything. And it sticks with me that to this day, there's not one person that's told me, I saw it coming. I knew Chris was like that. I knew it. Not one person. So it's just, it's, it's interesting to me, right? Are you available to talk to us? Yeah, um, definitely. Okay. All right. Um, so off the bat, if you have any questions, just tell us. So then, is there anything about your schedule today that makes it that you can't talk to us? No, that this, there was like a pass for this and the a.m. and the p.m.? Okay. It's, yeah, they reserved the room the whole day. Oh, okay. Just in case. That's just what they do. Okay. I didn't yeah. know if that was like two separate things or something. So in general, how is it here? It's a lot different than Colorado. Is yeah. it? It's like, Good or bad? It's better, I think, because, I mean, it's... Here, I'm actually around other people. I mean, in Colorado, it was just like, I was segregated and it was like pounding on the walls all night, screaming and just, you know, just telling me. From other people? Oh, really? Oh, they're just telling me like how I should kill myself and like what they're gonna do to me and just like all that kind of stuff. So yeah. it was, today, this, this is a lot different because I mean, people here they don't seem to, it's not like they don't care, but it's just kind of like they, they don't take, they don't like judge you as soon as you walk in. Colorado was like, they they knew why I was there and they just, that was it. They were mm -hmm. just like, they just, if they had one second alone with me, it would have been, really? They were, yeah. She, yeah. You know, like, they had to lock down the jail for me to walk down the hallway. So they had to make sure you were completely separated from anyone else. Mm -hmm. Jeez. Wow. You were able to talk to like family members and parents and all yeah, that? Yeah, my mom and dad, my sister. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good. Is that a good thing? That's a good thing. Good. <laughs> Yeah, yeah they, they don't hear from me. They're like, oh, what's wrong? What's going oh, on? <laughs> good. Yeah. And how was it with them? And so far, so good. Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, it was hard to hear your parents at sentencing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I didn't know if they were gonna, what they were going to say. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Well, so we have a thousand questions. I'm sure you do, too. Do you care if we start? or Do, yes. you, do you have any questions for us? Right. Go ahead. We'll start. Okay. All right. So one of the things that we're battling with is... Um, and I, don't, I, should, I won't make any assumptions today, so are you aware that this was a national story? After, after a little while, it was. I, I, I didn't talk to my parents while I was in Colorado. Okay. Because, I mean, my attorney team told me, all right, no phone calls, no letters, no, no nothing. Yeah, okay. So, like, I made, I made one phone call when I was in the segregation area there, but my dad didn't thought it was, like, somebody like a news. Oh. Somebody trying to call. Oh, so he didn't answer. Number. Yeah, so he didn't answer. But other than that, okay, I didn't talk to anybody. But from what the some of the deputies were saying, that you know, or my attorney team coming in and said, you know, this is like they've got people from Australia, England, and all kinds of people trying to figure out what's going on. 
Um, I got letters, but I couldn't keep them like it with me, so like I could read them like on my hour out, but it's like, you know, I got a bunch of just letters that had no return address and all stuff that was just, you know, not, not very good letters. Yeah, so, okay. They came from a weird perspective, didn't they? From what we have heard. Definitely. There was, there was one person, I guess, from Broomfield that was like writing like four times a week trying to come visit me, and then there was just a lot of people like writing that was like bleed through markers saying, you know, like you're a monster, or, you know, all kinds of Well, I don't, we're going to talk about some hard issues today, but I don't intend to take you to a dark place today. Okay. Um, I hope that when we're done, you'll feel better. I hope it'll be therapeutic. Um, we're going to talk about, obviously, um, what happened with your family, and so that's going to be hard to talk about. I appreciate anything you can tell me about it. Um, if you need to take time out, if you need to get a tissue, that's fine, right? Um, I think it'll be very good for you. It'll be good for us. And so one of the reasons I asked about that national attention is we got so many people who claim to have known you, claim to have been with you, dated you, slept with you, and 99 times out of 100, they were just crazy people. Had you heard about any of that? Uh, John, well, she told me about uh, one, some dude from Wyoming. Yeah. Trent. <laughs> yeah, Trent. that guy. That, okay. that, that blew my mind. I was like, Ooh. Yeah. And who told you about that? Uh, Attorney John Walsh. Oh, okay. <laughs> Graham and I interviewed him. <laughs> you had to? Yes. A waste of our lives. Yes. So, Trent, in summary, Trent came in and said, um, met you online on a dating app, um, had a few, you know, uh, casual but quick sexual encounters with you, um, met online, met you, and it was a time when you were uh, experimenting with maybe men. And so he said he met a couple times, met his friends, went to an apartment, uh, had a couple of meetings in a parking lot, and that was basically it. Does any of that sound familiar? Right. Okay. No, I never met the guy. Okay. All right. Yeah, he talked about being in a your truck with your girls, like the whole nine yards. So. Okay. No. <laughs> okay. I never even been to Wyoming, let alone okay. driven out there to see someone. Yeah. Do you have any uh, gay experience? No. Okay. Any interest? No. Okay. Never had a time, experimented, wondered? No. Okay. Is it possible that he found you instead of you finding him? Uh, from what John told me, he found me on like a WhatsApp. Yeah. I don't even have that app. Okay. Never, I mean, he had my phone, so okay. I mean, you, could probably, yeah, we you could probably saw what app I had. But I've never even heard of the app. But okay. So you saw it and you were like, no way. Yeah, was just Big like, lips, did you see the mm -hmm. giant lips? Yeah, I was just like, I have no clue what this guy is. Um, and he mentioned that... One of the times, just as a gift, you got them some skincare products. Mm -hmm. Does that, any of that sound familiar? No. Okay. Amanda McMahon. Have you ever heard that name? No. John showed me a picture of her. Okay. Oh, you did see a picture of her too? Yeah. He, uh, he had like. Yeah, that's the same. Two yeah. Side. No, does, that look, does that look familiar? That's the same picture you showed me on the okay. MSL one. I was, I was looking. I was like, who's that? He's like, oh, you don't know her either? Yeah. I was like, no. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you feel comfortable enough today to tell us if there were other people? Yeah, it was just Nicole. Okay. And that was it? Yeah, that was it. Okay. So Nicole was the only one? That was the only one. Was there ever like a one night stand with someone else just out of the blue and one and done? No. Okay. All right. Um, do you mind if we talk a little bit more about Nicole? Okay. So walk me through it because that was one of the things we never really got to ask you about. Right. Um, we didn't we talk. We kind of skipped on and you know, talked about where the girls were. But So what happened there? So it was probably around probably June 1st or something. That's when I first met her. And uh, it was just like a work conversation. I actually messed with the gas meters that you know, we were out in the field. And then I was messing up. And then you know, I took it to her, like, hey, you know, how, what's going on with this? Like, how do I fix it? And, you know, after that, you know, we just ran into each other a few times in the office. And I think it was probably the fourth time meeting. Um, she had asked me, because, like, when, I, when we were talking back and forth, I would say, uh, you know, like, we moved here from Colorado, or from North Carolina, stuff like that, and then uh, she was like, what's all this weed stuff you come like, oh, I took out my phone and showed her a picture, like, you know, my girl's on the phone, she's like, oh, okay, she's like, so you're like, yeah, like, you know, I don't wear, I didn't wear a ring at work, because, like, I sent it off so I get refitted, like, I lost all that weight, so, but, um. You lost so much weight that your fingers lost weight? Yeah, it was literally, like, I was out in the snow one time, I went like that, and I, ring went off on the rocks. 
because I was like, I was panicking trying to find out like, I can't wear this anymore. <laughs> but, um, so after that, she left me alone for a couple of days, and she texted me outside in the field. And then after that, we just kept texting back and forth, and it was just, you know, it's like, you know, like she used to work in a oil rig out in North Dakota, I think. And uh, we just kind of shredding the stories back and forth about what we did and everything. And then one day, it just kind of went to a different, different level. And then I never thought I would ever go to that level. But she was talking about meeting up after we got back from San Diego. Yeah, we, we, uh, yeah, we were in San Diego from the 22nd to the 26th of June. And uh, we met up after, after, we, got, after we got back. And, um, How did you guys meet up? Uh, at a park in uh, Thornton. At the, yeah, Thornton somewhere. Um, and after that, we just kept seeing each other pretty much the whole month of July. So let me ask you this. Um, you can tell me if I'm wrong. You strike me as somewhat of a shy person. So when you guys were meeting, it was just kind of very initiatory, like flirting at first? Okay. From both sides? Yeah. Okay. It was just kind of like feeling each other out, just kind of like, I don't, I mean. Yeah. Um, and so, texts, any calls? More near the end of June. Okay. And what makes you remember that it's June, that, that it happened? Because we called each other before I left to go to San Diego. Oh, okay. All right. Um, at first, did you think something might happen? I just thought it was just flirting. I didn't think it was actually like something that would actually yeah. happen. Yeah. Well, it's totally natural, right? I mean, everyone kind of flirts at work, right? Because um, the relationship between men and women is different. So if you're working with a girl at work, it's just kind of natural to flirt. I, you know, I wish I was just out in the field more instead of in the office. Those kind of but, uh, yeah. yeah. Kind of see it in your eyes. Yeah, I mean, if I was like, because when I was a field, when I went from a, like a rover to a field coordinator, like I would spend more time in the morning time in the office trying to get everything like situated where we're going to go and everything like that. And, you know, if I was a rover, I'd be more out in the field mm -hmm. and instead of like coming to the office like for more than an hour. Right. It just gave me more time to run into her pretty much. Yeah. Okay. What did she know about you? Did she know you were married first? She did, once I showed her the pictures yeah. on the phone. Yeah. I'm like, you know, the home screen picture. Mm -hmm. thing, so. so was your wife in that picture, or was it just your girls? It was just my girls right there, but my wife was the, like, the lock screen. Oh. So she knew I was married with my kids. Okay. Are you aware that she said she didn't know you were married? Yeah, what did you think about that? I figured it was like, you know, just trying to, same face, trying to, you know, I uh, just trying to... Some of my sister said it was like uh, just trying to keep things together. Yeah. Just trying to, she, she, she phrased it a different way, but just kind of like, uh, just like ground control, just trying to control everything that's going on around her, because I'm sure she got bombarded by all kind of different sides from the media and everything. So, and Have you talked to her at all? No. no. I'm no. hoping she hasn't like, you know, written me in a different alias or something. No, I'm not talking to her that way. Oh. Uh, I, and are you not allowed to talk to her? I, I would hope that. Okay. No one's told you that, though? No, I mean, I would I would expect, like, uh, I, I thought, like, in Colorado, it said, like, on a DOC list, of, if you're on, a, like, a victim list, you can't call anybody. Oh, right. But here, I'm not sure if that's the same, but okay. I just talked to my sister, my parents, uh, some friends of my parents. Okay. Do you wish you could talk to her? Maybe once, just to... Just get some closure? Just to say, like, hey, you know... Just once. <laughs> yeah. Just to say, hey, like, I'm sorry this all happened. I'm sorry. I'm not sure, like, what happened, like, afterwards, like, what you went through. Like, if you had, like, counseling, if you're, like, you know, different state, if you had to leave everything behind, I just wanted to let you know I'm sorry. And that's not something I never saw in my life happening or happening to somebody else either. Would you be all right if we told her that? That's fine. Do you want us to? Do you want us not to? And if she would want to even talk to you guys, then I'm not sure if someone comes up. I'm sure if she'd answer your phone call more than an attorney phone call that she didn't want to call and answer. Yeah. Oh, so your attorney tried to call her and she wouldn't answer? Yeah. Yeah, because I remember, I remember her phone number, but uh, after that they figured out, I guess, where she lived. Yeah. They left a call, a uh, business card there. 
and she just pretty much after like the fifth attempt, they said she said stop. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm sure she's getting bombarded like everyone else. So. And hopefully it's calmed down since, but but uh, I'm sure like I just hope she can like move, like I'm not there's like normalcy for her not since she's on the outside, but I'm hoping it can get that way at some point. I'm not sure if she had to leave Colorado or not, but I'm sure like, that would have been hard if she did. Mm-hmm. Tend to win a darker was her dream job, so that's the one thing I always like asked my attorneys is like, uh, did she have to leave? Like, did she have to do anything at work? Because that was one thing. So she always told me that was her dream job. So, mm-hmm. oh really? Yeah. Where did she leave? Uh, like the get like an oil company in Darko is like, you know, I mean, unless you're working for like BP or like kind of Phillips or something. Oh, I see what you're saying. And it goes like you know, those like big leagues. Yeah. Can I ask kind of a tough question? Mm-hmm. Um, did you love her? I felt like it was true. Yeah. I think so too. I think it was the same from her. Tell us about the time you spent with her. Well, I mean, it felt like it was you know. I think like when you say like more more like a shy guy, it's kind of like I never like been perceived by anybody before. It was kind of like I was the one, you know, trying to pursue, because like when me and Shanann met, it was like, you know, she was always like pushing me away, kind of like, you know. She was sick for a while, right? Oh yeah, she had, yeah, she was, uh, she had just got diagnosed with lupus, and she was on like a bunch of different medications and stuff, and um, it was like, I guess I was one of her type. And you weren't her type. I, I wasn't her type. Okay. Like she, she, she told me like when, uh, when I when she first because we had met. She told you that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Type. I remember you telling me that. <laughs> yeah, it was like you know when we first met. Like it was at a movie theater. And my uh, cousin's ex-wife set us up. You were dressed like shit, weren't you? <laughs> I didn't. I, I think didn't, that's what you told me. Yeah, I didn't know like that. Before we any games. So she was fancy well, was and he was in like ball. shorts and tennis shoes or something, right? Shoes and, like, I should have known the doorman, you know, was in a suit. And I was just like, oh, this isn't good. And, like, was when it she, a theater? It was a fancy theater, right? It, it was Kinda? in Charlotte. It was called the Epicenter. And apparently it, it, they give you like champagne and all kinds oh, of stuff. Oh, uh, this is a fancy date night theater. Yeah. yeah I think he came, theater. I think he came like he was going to a... Like I was Cinemax, like, 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 uh, like I was going to a bar, like an AMC, like a play theater. <laughs> no, it was like like you can, like just watch the normal normal movie, but like you can like drink champagne and yeah. like have like you know a Jack and Coke inside the theater and just yeah. sit there and just whatever. But like uh, yeah, when she first saw me, she was like, I should probably just turn and talk to the bartender a little more. Like, no, I'm not like I'm not, I'm not here to meet. But yeah, like it was, I was like persistent trying to pursue something. Else. I liked her, and uh, even, even like even on the first day, like I couldn't even eat anything really. I was just like, you know, just nervous. Uh, yeah, really. Yeah, I was just, she was just like, you know, chowing down. And she was like, you know, eat like a bird. I'm like, oh, that's funny. Like, you know, and she talked to my parents like, you know, months later. She's like, this guy just never ate. He's like, this guy eats like a trash disposal. This trash disposal. I was like, no, that wasn't not around me. I was like, well, I'm just nervous. <laughs> and I was just like, I was always like shaking and everything. But um. Yeah, it was, I was always pursuing her, and then just, like, um, finally I just, I grew on to her, like, you know, I would always, like, like, with her medications and stuff, I would always, like, she had, like, eight bottles of medications, so I would always get, like, her day and nights and kind of, like, put them all in that little, you know, flip open the box, you know, all that kind of stuff, and, you know, I would always, you know, be around her. I even went to her colonoscopy, and she said after that she knew I was, like, a, kind of a keeper. Mm-hmm. It's like, you know, like, who goes to a colonoscopy after three months with somebody? Right. It's a little soon. <laughs> <laughs> well, she asked if she needed a ride. I'm like, yeah. She's like, you want to go across the bus? Come on, see with me. I'm like, sure, why not? Like, I even sat with her while she drank that nasty stuff all day. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Or she's in the bathroom that's all day. That's a good test. <laughs> <laughs> that, that clear stuff that's not really, that doesn't really taste clear. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, it was, I mean, it felt like a great, it was a great relationship. Everything was, everything was great. Now you're talking about with Kessinger? No, with uh, Tom Wilson, Wilson, yeah. and, and um, like in the first first year, you know, like yeah, you know, my parents never. Oh, I don't know. My mom was always kind of hesitant. Why? I was, you know, I was the baby, I guess. I never, you know, because I never had a girlfriend in high school, so it's kind of oh. like she never like really saw me like 
Oh, interesting. So she's kind of watching her baby walk out a little bit. Yeah, because I, when I turned 18, I graduated. I never moved back. Okay. That, that at home. So and my sister old? moved back and forth. <laughs> How old were you when you met Shanann? I was 25. It was 2010, so. Okay. So no serious hmm. girlfriends before that? No, nothing more than like six months or so. Yeah, there was, there, was, there was some girls here and there, but just nothing more than, like, you know. I, the last girlfriend I had before Shanann, she was just actually got divorced, and I should, should have never done that. But it was more of, like, a, I was kind of, like, helping her get through her divorce, it seemed like. Mm -hmm. She went off to somebody else. I'm like, oh, nice to know. You're the rebound guy? <laughs> the rebound guy. Yeah. Pretty much. But, you know, that's how it goes. Would you say that in your relationships with women, um, it seems to me, and you tell me if I'm wrong, it seems to me like you're attracted to maybe a more dominant personality. It seems like it, because I'm more of the, just reserved, I mean, I just kind of like go with the flow type. Yeah. But then like, Stan usually made all the decisions, it seemed yeah. like, so. I get that, I'm the same. Yeah. I don't know what it is. And, and one of the reasons we're here is, we just keep telling ourselves, Chris just does not fit the mold. Chris does not. No. Like this, this, it just blows us away what happened, right? And so we will do a little bit of bouncing back and forth, and that's really just to get to know you a little bit better. Because we never really got that chance, did we? Um, we were talking about twice. Time. Yeah. Met you once. Yeah. Probably like three, well, I remember three or four times, probably. So then with, do you call her Nikki or Nicole? I guess I would call her Nikki. Okay. Uh oh. There's so many Nikki's and Nicole's in this. Right, there is. Yeah, I got confused. So we'll call her Nikki. Okay. Um, so then with Nikki, was it different? It just seemed like I was more in control, it seemed like. And that never happened. And, like, she'd actually, like, ask me, like, like, my opinion on a lot of things. And just, like, what I wanted to do. And just kind of, like, okay. That was new, wasn't it? Very new. Oh, that's fascinating to me. And so did it feel more like... An equal partnership, or it seemed like it. Yeah. Okay. So then, when it was date night, would you guys talk about it? Would you ask to go somewhere? Or would she say, "I want to go somewhere"? Was it too far? I, you know, the first time we went out, it was to a movie over at the Orchard, about 144th mm -hmm. over there, and you know, I asked her like, "Hey, you want to go see this movie?" And like, she's like, "Yeah." I'm like, "Okay, cool." And we just we got there. It was sold out, and you know, normally you'd probably just have you know just wait two hours like no just go home but not she just wanted to walk around and just talk and like, okay oh wow so that was that was different and you know I think she wanted to go to the car museum Shelby Museum in Boulder I've never been there and I was, that's right up your alley so yeah, I, I was just like that was awesome just to walk around cars for like an hour or so and then you know drag race in Vandermeer okay and I haven't been to a drag race since 2008, and that was in Charlotte. Okay. We looked at a feeling drag strip over there. And it's like the NHRA, the top fuel and fun car stuff, like me and my dad used to grow up and yeah. go there like all the time. And then, like, we uh, went to camping in uh, Sand Dunes National Park, mm -hmm. and I had never, I'd, I'd never been camping, I always wanted to do it. I thought it was, she'd done it like countless times. Oh, really? Okay. So, She's outdoorsy? Yes. Okay. Yeah, she, she, I guess she, every time, like, she needed to clear her head, she'd just go by herself and just go somewhere. Oh. Yeah. So she's a completely new type of uh, person and relationship. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, what were you thinking this whole time? Like, in the back I, of your head? I, in the back of my head, I was just telling myself, what are you doing? Like, you know, every time... You know, I, I open up my phone, I can see pictures, and, like, of my wife and my kids, and I'm just like, what am I doing? And then, like, every time I was with her, it seemed like I didn't think. It seemed like it was like a, like a blinder that was in my face. Oh. And it was, like, every time I look back on it, like, you know, like, I have pictures of my wife and kids and myself. And, like, every night, you know, or every morning, every night, you know, I just, you know, talk to them, you know, say, like, like, I have, like, this book uh, I used to read for CC, and I, I remember that book, so I read that to, to them, like, every night, and, like, there's some scripture and stuff that I read to them, so 
just try to, you know, just try to think back. Like, I wish this never happened. I just, like, wish that blinder wasn't on my head, if I in my eyes. That would have seen what was going on. Like, you know, I was having, like, everybody says, oh, you're just out, out there having fun while your kids, you know, or kids and wife are on vacation. I'm just like, no, it's, it wasn't like that, but it seemed like that's what it looked like when, you know, when you're going, you know, when you're going to camping, you're going to drag race, going all this other stuff that you have fun doing, but you're with somebody else that's not your family. It just didn't seem right. And, you know, all with her, it just didn't seem like I could even see that anymore. Yeah. And I was there at her house pretty much every night. So it was like I didn't have that time at home just to really think about mm-hmm. anything. Because literally, I didn't. Like, I was only at home from, like, when I got home from work, I worked out, I ate dinner, and then I went over to her house. Like, I was never, I never slept in my house, like, the whole month of July. Now, talk me through that, though. When you said you went home and then you were at her house, was that while Chanel was gone? Oh, okay. So you weren't even at your house. No. This all happened so quickly, didn't it? It it was insane, quickly. Like, I didn't, like, she even told me, like, she was never in, like, a normal relationship. She would never have somebody over at her house, like, more than, like, a, once or twice a week. But she yeah. felt like she wanted me over there. Yeah. She said she felt comfortable over there. Yeah. So it was just, like, that's what was different. Like, she wanted me over there. But I, and I just wish that all that would just go away. I just wish I'd almost, like, a. I know it's hard. To, I know it's wrong to say. I wish I never met somebody, but I wish I, you know, maybe met her at work and then just kept it that way. I think if we had a time machine, mm. I don't think this would happen again. Sure. Because some people, when this happens, you're like, well, if it wasn't this time, it would have been next time, or it wouldn't have been the next time. It just wouldn't have happened with you, would it? Sure. And it happened so quickly that you tell me if I'm wrong. You're not the kind type of guy to take control sometimes when you need to. Yeah, it seems like that's just what happened. Yeah, I didn't I didn't take control of the situation. It just like the situation controlled me. Right, it just happened. No, I get that man. I'm, I'm somewhat passive myself and it's like, you know, there's situations where I'm like, well, why did I let that keep going? You know? Yeah, I don't know why it was like it was like a roller coaster ride that I just kept punching and taking on and just never gonna get up. talk about the hardest subject. 